Hi, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I want to give you some updates and answer some frequently asked questions about the John Deere 317 half track tractor that I built. Uh, first of all, wow is all I have to say. I did not anticipate so many views and so much interest in this project. Uh, as of today, filming this, I believe today is October 2nd or 3rd, October 3rd, that we've received about 170,000 views on this project. Uh, and it was averaging between 10 and 12,000 views per day. I've been uh, swamped with comments, emails, and phone calls with questions about this uh, tractor build. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your interest. That really is the goal of iSafe Tractors. We are trying to preserve the old vintage small uh, lawn and garden tractors that were built heavy duty back, uh, back in the day. So thank you. I'm so glad this drew a lot of interest and we have a lot of new people now interested in this hobby. Uh, so first I'd like to take a moment to uh, answer some of the most frequently asked questions about this half track build. Uh, the first one was why put tracks on a lawnmower? Is, uh, in theory, having a track system will lower ground pressure and it will help spread out the load so you don't spin your tires out as quickly. So the whole idea of a half track is I want to spread that weight, I want to distribute the weight everywhere so we don't spin. And by not spinning the tracks, I can apply more of the engine's uh, torque from the wheels to the ground. So when you spin your tires or you spin a track, you effectively lose all traction and you lose all capability of creating work. By spreading the load out and having each grouser plate making equal contact with the ground, I'm able to more efficiently use the tractor's power to go forward. Uh, the original idea behind building this is I wanted an easier way to spread topsoil and to level out sites for the various outbuildings that we're building here on our property. Well, as I just mentioned, these lawnmowers that were marketed from the 60s through the 80s weren't really just lawnmowers. They were designed to be heavy, heavy duty. They have uh, really heavy duty rear differentials, rear axles. Uh, they have heavy duty transmissions and they're weighed uh, about twice to three times the weight of a modern day lawn tractor. So these tractors were really meant to do more than just mow the lawn. And that is part of the, the mission statement with iSafe Tractors. We're trying to show people uh, the limits of what you can do with these old uh, awesome machines. So that was the real motivation for doing this. Another common question was uh, why did I decide on this particular over the tire track setup? Well, uh, I was originally actually going to build a fully tracked machine. I have a copy of the Brute Mini Dozer plans that at one point you were able to find from uh, YouBuildItPlans.com. Uh, I don't believe they sell them there anymore. But I was originally going to build a fully tracked garden tractor. And I decided to do something a little bit more capable for the everyday garden tractor enthusiast. Uh, when I read through the plans, it was a little bit more complex than even the backhoe build that I did. And even though it is uh, within, I believe, within my capabilities, I wanted to do something that could have a broader uh, draw for people. So I decided on a half track. With a half track, you don't need to worry about steering brakes. You don't have to worry about steering pretty much at all. This tractor steers 100% fine with just the steering wheel in the front. I chose the 317 as a platform for this build because it has steering brakes, but I don't need them. So I can just drive this tractor as normal, which is a huge uh, plus. Uh, the next reason I decided to go with an over the track, uh, I'm sorry, over the tire track model versus building a sprocket here was again to make it easier for people to build. So uh, by using chain links, and then this uh, pretty thin steel, I was able to build this uh, in less than probably eight hours. It really didn't take long. It didn't cost a ton of money. Uh, that's another frequently asked question I'll answer in a moment. And this kind of track system is easy to build. Anybody with a little 110 volt welder uh, can build this setup right here. So that's the reason I went with it. Uh, another question is, how much did this cost? So this cost about $200 total. So for the idler uh, frame in the back that I'll show you in a moment, 
Uh, I had a lot of steel lying around from past projects. I bought some 5 8 inch uh, hot rolled round steel. I bought the chain link, this uh, flat bar steel, and then these hot rolled squares. Uh, everything all together, about $200. So really, not an expensive project. Another common question was why did I put the idler or bogey wheels for the track behind the tractor versus in front? Well, uh, well I have a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason, I was really trying to mimic the old Fordson half-track tractors and they always put the tracks towards the rear. I also think it looks cooler, uh, but mainly, the main reason I did it, it was from a practicality standpoint. Uh, it is a lot harder to position those wheels in front of the drive wheels on a small garden tractor. The reason being is there's not enough clearance between this fender and where you would put the bogey wheel. In order to make this work here, I would have to cut or modify this fender to raise uh, the leg rest up. And then when I do that, it kind of puts the operator in an awkward situation. Uh, so that's why I put it in the back. It's also easier for people watching this at home. Uh, to try this idea out and if you don't like it you can just uh, remove the tracks and be done with it however if I put the track here in the middle once you cut and modify the fenders there's really no uh, no going back to the original condition now let's get to some of my testing experiences and some of the modifications I'm gonna make uh, first thing I've added uh, wheel weights and I've weighed down the tractor so I can get better traction on the ground. Second, I've added a dozer blade to the front. Or hey, John Deere, Sears, and Cub Cadet fans don't hate me because this uh, front blade, dozer blade, is a little bit of a smorgasbord of stuff. I've got a Cub Cadet lift cylinder, a Sears dozer blade, and then of course the John Deere tractor. Uh, and I've tested this tractor by leveling out areas where I'm going to be making my garden bigger. And it performed okay. So some of the other changes I need to make is I need to revamp this uh, track tension system. My original thought was I can just use tire pressure to keep the track uh, tense enough to operate. Uh, in theory, sounds good. In practice, I need more adjustment. So I need to expand uh, I need to figure out a way to push the idlers out further so I can get more track tension. Another flaw to this is I'm using 5 8 inch hot rolled steel and it's attached only to the idler bracket in one side. So as the tracks get more tight, I've actually been bending by accident that axle that holds the idler wheels. So I need to address that. I'm going to make that stronger, possibly add another uh, support on the outside of the tires. I also need to make it so I can tension the tracks more. So I'm probably going to end up making an entirely new uh, idler wheel bracket back there. Uh, I'm also going to be adding truck shocks. Here they are. Adding truck shocks to the back. So these shocks I'm going to compress them, I'm going to install them. These will help hold the track on the ground uh, whenever I go over uneven terrain. I didn't do this at first because my property here is really, really flat and I didn't think I needed it. However, even with a flat property, there are still tiny bumps and holes everywhere that uh, could benefit from the track staying on the ground. So I'm going to add two of these to the back uh, and that should hopefully solve that problem. Uh, other than that, that's the current update. The tractor's been doing uh, pretty well. Has it been doing better than a tractor with wheels and no tracks? Uh, probably not yet. But as I said earlier, this is just an experiment to show people uh, what is possible with these old garden tractors. These really are amazing machines. You can get them cheap on Craigslist and you can be your own backyard hobbyist engineer and turn these into a bunch of cool things. So I hope this video answers your questions. It uh, gives you kind of an update of what's going on, and I hope that you get inspired to do things like this uh, yourself. If you ever need help or any parts for the engines that drive these tractors, that's really where isavetractors.com comes into play. You can call me, talk to me personally, or talk to some of my staff. We can help you get parts. We can help you diagnose your issues. We can inspire you, hopefully, and give you ideas on what you can do 
with your old garden tractors. Well, my name is Norman. Thanks for watching.